I made a TikTok video a couple days ago and it sort of grew quite a bit. I got about a hundred thousand views I think on it which <laughs> it's both really cool and so stressful. <laughs> Every time my content blows up a little bit I get so so stressed because uh, <laughs> the internet is scary. <laughs> I'm only on the internet because it's necessary to me making a living off of my art and I want this to be my job and you know it's the only way really for me to make a living off of what I do but if I didn't have to be on the internet I probably would live in a cottage somewhere and uh, no one would ever hear from me again <laughs> so whenever I'm perceived by a big number of people it I'm not I'm not really well equipped for that kind of thing but it's always really lovely like people are, are super nice and whenever a YouTube video or a TikTok video does well I usually get quite a few sales from it I got a few sales from that TikTok video people were really nice and ordered a bunch of prints so I'm gonna get those ready because the, today's Friday and I go to the post office on Saturdays so I'm gonna get everything ready today I'm also probably going to package some Patreon rewards because I have a few to send uh, and that way I'll have a nice big bag to take to the post office all in one go with me tomorrow and that will be done for this week. Packaging orders and Patreon rewards today is the priority so this is what I'm going to start doing. of <laughs> paintings that I prepared in my last video that I need to paint but as I mentioned I like working on several things at the same time plus these paintings are going to take me a little while to put together and And I have a few things I want to explore with my style before I jump into them. So I have a few smaller paintings in mind that I would like to work on first. And I'm not talking about these ones. These ones <laughs> were supposed to be smaller paintings. But I, I just always go bigger than I intend. 
Like these were supposed to be the small paintings and I... The concept got out of hand and now they're this size. And while they'll be quicker to paint than the bigger ones I showed you in my previous video <laughs> and required a lot less preparation, they'll still take me like a good couple days probably per painting or at least a full day. So... <sighs> but like I said, there are a few things that I want to try out with my style first before I jump into bigger concepts and I'm going to do that today. I'm going to experiment a little bit with some concepts. Something I do for big paintings is make sure that my sketch is very clean so there aren't any eraser marks which can affect the surface of your watercolour paper and create marks when you paint on it afterwards. But I really like the look of sketches. I know a lot of artists are like that where we love the look of the sketch and then we clean it up and it just something's missing. So I'm gonna experiment with that, paint over some rougher sketches. I'm not gonna be doing what I do for my bigger paintings, which is preparing my sketch on in my sketchbook and then printing it out and transferring it to the paper after I've gotten it exactly right. I want to dive into those paintings quicker and make them a little bit more spontaneous than bigger pieces. So I'm hoping to get at least one of those paintings done today because I don't intend on them being very long and very complicated. I want to be very loose and experimental with them. So let's do this. <laughs> I'm rambling because I don't want to get started. <laughs> Let's do a border. I'm gonna tape this to my surface. Let's do like one centimeter border for that one. This paper, I believe, is 300 GSM. 140 pounds which used to be the thickest I ever worked and felt like luxuriously thick but now that I work on stuff that is 600 GSM and, GSM and more it feels so thin so I'm taping this one to the board because it will warp so having it tipped down it's not really stretching it but it will still prevent it from going too crazy Let's do this. Right now I'm in a mood where sketching is alright, but I'm scared, literally scared of painting. I think part of that is because I've been overthinking stuff. So I've been working on this piece and um, I've been sort of gradually... The longer I work on something, the more I overthink it, which is why sometimes I think it's a bit counterproductive of me to be too um, delicate with my preparation process, just because the longer I spend on something, the more chances there are of me spiralling into overthinking and the more I overthink something, the more um, frozen in place I become and the less 
the least I'm able to connect with the sort of spontaneousness required for me to jump into a painting without being scared of it. Fear is always there, I think. I've, I'm always scared of starting a new painting and a new drawing. I'm always scared. Um, but sometimes the excitement trumps the fear. And more often than not, it will if I don't give fear time to take hold. So the fear will always be there. Plus, I'm an anxious person. Um, so <laughs> the fear is just part of my life. But I've got enough practice with my anxiety now and with my art that I'm able to more often than not push past the fear and understand that it's just a feeling and not a reflection of my reality. But sometimes if I give myself enough time to overthink something, uh, the fear sort of takes over and starts um, freezing me in place. And I think I'm at this stage right now. So today the goal is going to be to push past that and force myself to just put painting on paper. So this is sort of the longest I've ever spent on an underdrawing. And I want to see if it, if it, if having those sort of basic values set down with my pencil will affect the painting if I paint in glazes and acrylic over the top. My values are a little bit all over the place, but hey. Um, I'm scared, I'm, I'm stuck this week, I'm finding it very hard to start things. I'm not going to try and be perfect, I'm going to just try and see if I can achieve some sort of effect and if I like it or not. And then we'll move on to the next experiment. Okay, it's sponsor time. I'm sure you already know Skillshare. I know Skillshare, we all know Skillshare. They're great, they support my channel regularly, they support a lot of artists on YouTube regularly actually, and they can also support you and your creativity, curiosity and appetite for learning. Skillshare's online learning platform is the perfect place to go dive into anything you're excited about really, uh, whether that be art, illustration, digital painting, cooking, photography, video editing, you name it basically. You want to learn more about something, they probably have a course on it, usually created by another fellow artist or editor or generally knowledgeable person. Look at all these courses, isn't it neat? And if you don't know where to start, here's one I personally really like. Observing is Learning from Still Life to Finding Your Style by D. Uti. Um, it's an hour-long course about using practice and observation to find your personal style, and I think Dee is a really lovely teacher. She makes the process feel friendly and welcoming, and she shares a bunch of valuable advice and different perspectives on art. So if you'd like to check that course out, make sure to click the link in my description. The first 1,000 of you to click the link will get 30% off a Skillshare Premium Annual Membership. So you can explore both the video I recommended as well as the rest of their video library. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. So you can start exploring your creativity today. 
So if you decide to try it out, or if you already are a subscriber on Skillshare, leave me a comment with a course you liked, I'd love to check it out if I haven't already. And next, here's an ink drawing I had a lot of fun with. Thank you. 